So thank you already for the introduction. Um, I was going to introduce myself since I'm new to the network. Um, but I have to shorten it a bit. Um, I can add um, that I have uh, obtained my master's degree in experimental psychology and sexology. And during my time as a student, I had the opportunity to work on a, a Delphi study on prior prioritizing sexual health with some members of the network. Um, with Ethel as well, uh, who is here. And uh, um, she introduced me to the network. Um, and therefore, I'm very honored and really glad that I can present uh, our study today. Um, I will start with a very brief introduction on the evolution of modern sexology and sexual health to frame our research a bit and from there on uh, introduce our study. Um, so, sex was predominantly. Um, assumed to be a bio biological function, somewhat uh, influenced by culture. And from there on, uh, the domain of sexology has actually uh, expanded to other disciplines. Um, first, we have the introduction of the um, seven-point Kinsey scale, um, which allowed for a, I'm sorry, <laughs> which allowed for a, um, a better understanding of um, um, a spectrum of sexual orientation. Um, then the work of Masters and Johnson actually focused on the sexual response cycle um, and re resulted in a new uh, clinical approach, uh, sex therapy with um, sensate focus. And then during the 70s, under the most uh, known paradigm of that time, social constructivism, uh, Genin and Simon uh, released their um, book social, uh, Sexual Conduct. Um, and then uh, from the late uh, 70s, and especially after the introduction of Viagra, um, essentialism um, assumes that sexuality is um, determined by independent laws regardless of um, social context. And now we have the uh, biopsychosocial model, uh, the most famous one at the moment, and uh, that one transcends that one-sided um, Social, socialization or medicalization of um, sex. So um, the definition of sexual health has also evolved over time. Um, in the 19th and 20th century, um, sexual activity was actually, actually, actually seen as a public um, health affair in that it dealt with the procreation within the legal framework of marriage. Then from, um, yeah, with the introduction of oral contraception, um, after the AIDS epidemic and with the sexual revolution in the background, um, non-reproductive sex, um, also outside, outside the marriage, um, was acknowledged. Um, and now at the present, um, sexual health refers to the social, psychological, inter and intra-personal uh, uh, aspects of sex. Um, as a core element of overall public health and well-being. Um, and all these elements have also been implemented in the WHO definition um, of sexual health. However, um, in an article by Giammi from 2002, uh, he investigated the, um, uh, the history of, sex, um, of sexuality as a public health affair and he actually concluded that there is a lack of international consensus uh, with regard to sexual health and uh, its application in public health public, um, policy. So what we wanted to do in uh, our study is actually outline the current state of um, sexual health. Um, and we aim to do three things. So first we want to establish an inventory of priority topics. We also want to achieve consensus uh, regarding the importance of those topics. Uh, and at last, we wanted to pinpoint uh, the existing gaps and possible improvements in sexual health. And we did this by a Delphi study um, that uh, was consisted with uh, three rounds. Um, and we explored with um, experts from um, this network uh, what they thought should be prioritized in sexual health. So normally, yeah, now we can see um, a slight um, overview of the pr procedure of the Delphi study. 
Um, we will get into in more into detail on the next slide, but here you can already see that there were three rounds um, that happened between uh, April 22 and July. Now, we started with uh, the first round. Um, that was an open-ended questionnaire. Uh, we asked the participants to generate ideas to um, express their opinions um, on sexual health. And uh, based on um, content analysis, we, um, those individual um, opinions were actually converted to um, 37 questionnaire items for the next rounds. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Um, so um, the questionnaire items for uh, round two and three uh, consisted of liquor type um, responses going from um, yeah, very important item to, to uh, not important at all. Um, and following the completion of round two, we actually um, um, we analyzed the responses to see whether consensus had been reached. So if at least 70% of our participants rated a specific item as important or very important, uh, that item was actually treated as an item on which participants converged and was therefore included in the final list of um, priorities. Now, if an item was not able to reach the 70% cutoff score, but was also not below the 50%, um, that item was reintroduced in the third round and was contested among participants. Um, and then items scoring just below 50% were just omitted from um, the next round. And then round two, three was um, similar to round two. Um, we just um, repeated um, the questionnaire, but uh, solely for the contested items. So these items were uh, re-scored uh, re by the participants and re-analyzed by um, us to determine whether additional items had achieved consensus or not. So uh, here we have the three questions. Uh, we asked the participants in round one. Um, the first question was actually the the main um, yeah, focus of our study. Um, here we ask about um, priorities in sexual health. However, the two additional questions um, asked for um, possible improvements in the field or existing gaps, and they actually provided very rich um, qualitative information. Um, so after round one, we, um, we did a content analysis uh, we did it by um, conducting, um, categorizing words, phrases, um, uh, and parts into uh, units of analysis that convey an, a similar, similar central meaning. So eventually we were, we were actually able to um, construct 37 um, priority items and we uh, grouped them into 10 overarching teams. So those uh, 37 items provided the foundation on which to construct the next, um, the next round, that is round two. Um, so the responses of the first round were actually um, analyzed and then represented to the experts uh, for further consider consideration. So on the left, you can actually uh, look how a, a survey looked for a specific item. So we provided a short summary uh, of the item and also some information on how many participants actually uh, prioritized that specific item. And the uh, participants had then the opportunity to um, weigh the importance of that given item. So um, in our study, uh, 20 items out of the 37 uh, gained consensus after the first round. 11 were contested and were therefore reintroduced in the third round where three additional items had been added to our final list of priority items. Now, um, shortly the demographics of our results. I think what is important is that the, what we expected, um, the response rate, um, was negatively correlated with the number of rounds. But what was also important is that most of our um, participants were actually active in research 
uh, education, and also in, what was it, the well-being and clinical practice. So that's something to think of uh, for later. Then here are the um, results after the first round. Um, as I ex uh, explained, uh, a content analysis um, provided us with 37 um, uh, priority items that were grouped into 10 overarching teams, which we can see on the right here. So in round two and three, participants had, actually had to um, actually rate the importance of those given items. So here we have um, the results from round two and three. Um, those results provided us with a hierarchy of the um, mentioned uh, topics. Um, we were mostly interested in the agreement percentages. It's, it's a bit small here probably, but um, the agreement, agreement percentage um, shows us how many participants actually rated a specific item as important or very important. So the higher the percentage, <coughs> um, the more participants thought of this item as a priority. So we don't have the time to go through every um, item, of course, um, but um, we are ending um, uh, our article that will be published very soon, I hope. Um, but we can already see that the three items marked in green are the ones with the highest agreement percentages and the three uh, with the red marks are the lowest ones. I don't know if, it's, if you can read it or... Okay. I will, I will um, explain it a bit uh, later so we have an idea on what topics are important. Um, so... Those, um, th that was a part of the priority uh, question, but remember that we asked two additional questions on existing gaps uh, in sexual health and possible uh, improvements. Um, we also did a qualitative content analysis on that, and we um, ended uh, with nine different um, subjects. Um, in, the, in, the, in the article that we can hopefully soon all read, um, we can go in, uh, you can see um, all the details and we will provide some very interesting quotations of the participants who, um, who were in our study and I think it's a very nice addition to the paper because you can really see why participants brought up a specific um, topic. Now I will briefly go to the 10 topics that were um, given the highest agreement percentages. Um, so the two items, uncle sexology and the reduced or low sexual desire, those um, accentuate the more medical um, position of sexual health. However, um, participants also clearly acknowledge the more psychological and sociological uh, component of sexual health. Um, that can be seen in the, in the topic, uh, the neglect of psychosocial aspects due to medical issues. Um, but the study also reveals that sexual health goes beyond the BPS um, paradigm. So sexual health is not possible um, without the inclusion of sexual and human rights. So therefore the consensus also, sh also showed that participants agreed most on um, those four topics, so sexuality in the elderly, sexual violence, gender, gender equality, and the neglect of positive aspects. However, to achieve um, all this, uh, our participants agreed that education is actually the most um, important overarching theme. So we are talking about education to youngsters, as well as professionals in sexology, and also experts in general medicine. So that is the basis according to our panel and we should probably focus more on that. So um, education came out as the most important topic. However, we do have to um, realize that most of our participants are working in education. So that's a critique point. Um, we also looked at the least, um, yeah, least, the items that scored uh, the lowest, 
And we do have to keep in mind why these were scored so low. Is there because a lot of um, work has already done in these subjects? Is it because there are not many problems relating to, the, to, this, uh, to these subjects? Or maybe um, there are just a lot, uh, less people involved in this um, in these topics that we don't consider the, the, the top priority uh, population to aim. Now, we also have a little, uh, yeah, some limitations in our study as well. I will briefly go to them because I don't have much time. Um, but we have a, a very small sample size of a very specific group. Um, uh, we also, yeah, participants choose themselves whether they can, whether they wanted to participate in the study or not. So um, we cannot uh, rule out selection basis of recruited uh, experts and volunteer uh, bias. Uh, we also uh, chose at 70% threshold uh, a priori. So if we chose an, another percentages, that could uh, affect the results as well. And all... Um, uh, all topics, all data is analyzed through content analysis, which inevit inevitably asks for some importation uh, of the researchers. Um, so that was my last slide. Um, I want to end to, to say with um, the fact that this is the first study to our knowledge that identifies interdisciplinary uh, transnational sexual health topics. Um, so numerous disciplines disciplines each deal with sexuality and uh, I think initiatives to improve sexual health should start from an emergency and we need a systematic plan of action um, to make decisions about uh, where we want to invest. So by, by bringing multiple disciplines together we actually saw that these uh, professionals did share a common hierarchy of the topics we also don't want to um, neglect the items that scored very low. We, we should look at those items as well and ask ourselves why um, did they score that low? Um, and possible um, implications for f future research could be um, do this um, a, a same level of um, Delphi study with the general population and see whether we have similar results. Um, and maybe we can focus on um, structured conflicts instead of agreement percentages and compare opposing views. Um, that could be an idea for some future uh, research. So that was my last slide. I hope I was a bit on time. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, everybody who worked on the study and helped, uh, helped me write the article as well. So thank you very much.